there, this is Amanda and Andrew and we're two native speakers who've been living here for some time. Right, and today we're going to talk about medical terminology. And I've had so many problems with medical terminology going to the doctor here in Poland that I've made plenty of mistakes. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, it can get a bit complicated because uh, when you have to communicate with the doctor, there are some words that you really need to know and uh, they're easy to mix up and create awkward situations with. And we've made <laughs> many mistakes in Polish and we're here to help you with those Polish words and to translate them into English so you don't feel, well, well, embarrassed as we do sometimes when using Polish. So the first word we're going to talk about is at the dentist's office, right? And right. that, of course, is dziura, right? Dziura. So that would that really means a hole. So. <laughs> but could I go to the dentist and say in English, I have two holes? <laughs> well, you know, I think they would tell you that you have a cavity. Exactly, right? a cavity. And they seem to have all these different gradations of it here. Like you have a Prukinica, which is like a tooth decay, a decay mm -hmm. which I guess could mean like a spot or something. But then, you know, I guess as it advances, it becomes an actual hole. Well, so, I think the official terminology is ubytek, right? Ubytek. Yes, which doesn't sound too nice. No. But we do have the word, of course, jura, which people do use quite regularly. Right. Oh, my son, he has a hole in his tooth. But we would say cavities. He's cavity. got cavities. He's got a cavity. He has a cavity. Right. Right. And we can count that. That's mm -hmm. no problem. He has two cavities. He has three mm -hmm. cavities. Oh, my gosh, my child has had many cavities over the years. So that's okay. Now, as we move down... <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we're starting at the top here. I guess we can avoid the brain and its problems. We have many problems yeah. there. But <laughs> the one that I've always had problems with, of course, is migdawe. Right. So <laughs> Which is... These are most... your tonsils, right? Your tonsils, and exactly. And migdawe are... Almonds. almonds. So I suppose they're almond size and shape. <laughs> exactly, but you could not say, I have problems with my almonds. No, no. <laughs> um, and, I, and who knew there was a third <laughs> almond? A th <laughs> That's right, they call yeah. it migdałek or migdał. I have no idea. Chechi, right? The third one. Or gardłowe is what they say, uh -huh. right? So, and my daughter needs to get her third tonsil. But do we say that in English? Is that normal to say my third tonsil no. removed? No. And, I, and your, your wife, Danka, was telling me about it, and the whole time I was scrambling to figure out what she was talking about by a third tonsil. Like maybe Lena had a, an abnormal amount of tonsils or something. So, but no, apparently it's the adenoid. Adenoid, isn't it's it? It's your third tonsil. Who knew? That's right. right. And the adenoid does get cut like the tonsils in, does. In the United States, it can. Yeah, I guess. It um, used to be. used to be they take your tonsils out every time anything happened. Um, but well, that's right, yeah. because people had ear infections, all sorts right. of problems, and the typical idea was is that it was connected to your tonsils, mm -hmm. and the children had a problem, tonsillitis. Mm -hmm. right. Now, this is a big problem, because when you're talking about tonsils, we also talk about angina, right? Right. And almost everyone uses this word, and they say, Andrew, I have angina, or my daughter has angina, or yeah. however they pronounce it. But in English, this is a huge problem. Problem because well, if you yeah, say yeah, it's some kind of a severe. It's it's not a heart attack, but it's no. Like it a, sounds pretty close. I'm having yeah, angina. Angina <laughs> is like heart pain, like, like heart pain or pain in the chest or something. Yeah, this is a serious yeah. condition. I think it's dushitsa is what they would call it. Right. So, so this is basically angina is like a pretty bad sore throat. Is that right? Yeah, a pretty yeah. bad sore throat is what I would say. You when know. the tonsils are inflamed, mm -hmm. you probably have also. Um, some sort of congestion as well. But yeah. dushnitsa is something completely different in Polish. So if you're talking about angina in English, please understand that that's something serious. You need to it's go to the hospital. It's severe, right? <laughs> so please do not tell us, native English speakers, or anybody in English, that your child has angina unless the child has serious heart condition. Yeah. But Speaking then we also talk about these almonds come back all the time. Migdawe, right? Migdawe. Because people okay. also talk about Myślet o niebieskich migdałach, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of strange to me because in English one. construction, because all of these <laughs> almonds are everywhere. They're in your body. You're uh, thinking about them yeah. and you eat them. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just like having a kind of a daydream. Or yeah, a and where does that come from? It's so bizarre. I guess because... Because blue almonds would be a pretty weird thing to see. I, you I know, guess. I, you know, it's but like who a, came up with this? I'm thinking of blue almonds. Yeah, the same people that see pink elephants. I, I don't know. <laughs> but not a medical condition, more a psychiatric condition, I guess. <laughs> but it's daydreaming. Right. Daydreaming, I think, would yeah. be the best. Yeah. Well, moving from almonds and from, of course, from tonsils. From severe to very severe. It looks like next on our list is trond, which is leprosy. Who and that's all I'm well sorry, and good, yes. but it's, the reason I put this word here is because you have thronjik, which is yeah. which is a, a medical condition, acne. 
Right. Which is for me, it was absolutely horrible because you have like little ac little little leprosy. Yeah. It's acne. It's a Thronjik. small jump from <laughs> leprosy to acne. I mean, you know. Who would think? I mean, how yeah. horrible. These and it's words an easy one to mix up. So, you you know, you could be telling <laughs> yeah, somebody. Oh, I have thrones. Th th yeah. And people will think they'll run away from you. Right. Because they'll think you'll have leprosy, which I have not encountered here in Poland, luckily. No, no I mean, leprosy. You know. But thronjik, of course, is, is something acne for the right. most part. Right. But we also have other words in English, as they do in Polish. Prysk, of course, Prysk. is pimples. And then there's, oh, it's not prysh, oh, pryszka. That's, you don't want to tell people that you have that. Oh, pryszka. No, uh, but that's, you know, that's, a, or, that's a cold sore, isn't it? That's a cold sore, but I think it's like both kinds. So <laughs> you, yeah, you got to be careful. <laughs> so don't want to mix those up. <laughs> okay. So moving on there, yeah. then we have some of these diseases that kids typically have because we have kids, you have all of these inoculations, right. these vaccines that you have, that you have to go to the doctor, get the shot, the child gets the shot, and as a result, they are immune, they will not have these mm -hmm. diseases. Now, of course, there's some controversy, but let's just go through some of these diseases because I had a really difficult time many years ago, and you'll find this story hilarious, is that one of the students said, oh, he wants to, let's say, Wojtek has mm. Schwinka. Right. And that's why he can't come to school. And I thought to myself, well, okay, he has a small pig. Right. So what's his problem? He can still come to school. Uh -huh. And it was only later that I realized that Schwinka is a medical condition. And in English, it would be, do you remember? The mumps. The mumps. I guess because right. you get the puffed <laughs> up face. You start to look it. like a small pig. Yeah. And they immunize for that now. So this must have been, I don't know, they must have recently not immunized <laughs> for it if this guy had it. Right. It looked like such an idiot because I was talking about a small pig. Right, right. And I thought that the kid had had a small pig had purchased a small pig and was missing school that day. I guess it's, yeah, he didn't want it to and be the lonely. Other, <laughs> and the other one, of course, is Odra, which Odra. I thought was the river. The river, yeah, yeah. You know, maybe there's some kid, maybe it, you know, at one point that was its path spreading around or something. I don't really know where the name is. I don't is get from. the connection, yeah, no. if there is any connection. But mm -hmm. Odra in English is measles. Measles. And then you have your variety of, I guess, different pox diseases, <laughs> which they all say are OSPA, which I would kind of mix, I would in an unintentionally mix ULDRA with OSPA sometimes by accident. Well, mix measles are different, right? right? Because OSPA, when they're talking, typically they're talking about OSPA Vietna, right? And right. that is... Chicken pox. Chicken pox, not right. wind pox. Right. But I guess... Because it's transferred by, mm, by air, by I air, guess the idea is. You know, and why do we call it chicken pox? I it's not transferred really by chicken. Any idea. chicken. And is pox singular it, or plural? Oh, I don't know. Pox. I think it's one of those non count ones. That's just an X at the end, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you can't say, you know, a pox on your house or something. It <laughs> means, like, definitely more than one. So. Okay, but. Yeah, the question is why chicken pox? I thought it because it looks Maybe, like you like pluck... the chicken pluck, pluck, pecked you or something. Maybe. Oh, I was thinking plucking the feathers. It looks like chicken pox. Maybe. It looks like you've been a, like a plucked chicken. You know, I never thought of that. That might that be That was it. my thought. Yeah. I if think anybody do... knows, please tell us because we're just in the dark about that. But anyway. But that's the thing that's, is that chicken yeah. pox sounds like you, when you say chicken pox, it's, oh, okay, it's nothing major. Mm -hmm. But then OSPA is just used casually. And of right. course, I'll make a mistake and say OSA, which yeah. of course it has nothing to do with <laughs> it's it. It's a hornet. <laughs> <laughs> or wasp, I think, right? A, a wasp. Uh, is it? It's not important. It has nothing to do with diseases. That's another topic, insects. We'll get to that another day. <laughs> which but, sometimes do bring disease. Yeah. But then we have ospa charna, which sounds like it's so horrible. Yeah, because you think and of... ospa pravjiva, mm -hmm. or I think, right? I think is the way they say it. But okay. that you'll read in history, and that is smallpox. Smallpox. And, you know, which sounds you... not so bad in English. Right. Well, Chicken pox and smallpox. See, when I saw the charna, I thought, oh, that must be the black plague <laughs> one, right? Because that, but that's something else. That's um, that's the black ju death. Yeah, juma. Yeah, that's juma. That, that's horrible. Right, no, that's right. a plague. Plaga. Mm -hmm. You can also mm -hmm. say. But for the most part, ospa can mean pox, but they just say pox casually, meaning chickenpox, chicken pox, because they don't immune. They don't, they don't get a shot for that. In the United States, I understand everybody gets a shot now for that. Do they, they immune now? themselves. Yeah. Okay, because we didn't as kids, but maybe they've, you know. I think now here uh, in Poland, do here now? kids do still get the chicken pox. Oh. But we're not talking about smallpox. Yeah, so yeah, if yeah. you say pox by itself, you couldn't say my son has the pox. No, no, no. <laughs> you have to say chicken pox. Right, right. Okay. Oh. Now our last wonderful. <laughs> So, yes. Which right? sounds nice. Yeah, too, it but... sounds kind of, you know, nice. 
<laughs> which in English, of course, translates to rubella, rubella which, which doesn't sound nice. No, it's, it's uh, <laughs> Or German see. measles, mm -hmm. which yeah. is hilarious because we call it German measles, mm -hmm. as opposed to Odra, which is in German <laughs> as a river. Well, not anymore, but it's the Odra river. Mm -hmm. But Odra measles, Ruzicka, German measles, or rubella. Mm -hmm. And this, I guess you turn reddish. I guess, or you get, it's a rash more than just the bumps. I, mm -hmm. I don't know, because it's one of those things that I don't think people really get anymore, because they're mostly not. immunized. Uh, yeah. So I have not seen a case myself to verify, but uh, I think that's right. what it is. Well, these are all words that you encounter here in Poland that people mm -hmm. talk about, particularly with young kids. Yeah, you have to go through the whole gauntlet of the immunizations, and you, you know, you, I just got the book, you know, in Polish so I'd understand when I went into the doctor. And we've been using this so word immunizations, immunizations or shots right. or uh, what would we call this in English? Right, in Polish, this in is of Polish, course. In Polish, you're, um, oh gosh, you're putting me on the spot here. Because I, I, Zastik is not it. That's no, Zastik is when you have the injection, right, isn't it? Right, it's an injection. Szczepienia, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think. Szczepienia, thank you. Right? you. So this is of course when you can say simply just has a shot against yeah, the disease. Yeah, your immunization. And the shot of course is just immunization, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So a shot is just influence. Vaccine would be yeah. the best, yeah. right? So vaccinations. So you're immunized and you've had your vaccines, or you're vaccinated. I think it works both ways. It's all way. the same. And if you don't know, you can just always use the word, he had his shot. Yeah, right? this which, shot, that shot. Yeah, which right. is informal and it mm -hmm. doesn't have to do about guns. It's just talking about getting that vaccine that we've talked about. So we've talked about all of these wonderful things so that you feel a little bit more yeah. comfortable if you do have children that are going abroad and they want to talk about something that you'll be able to talk about these things. Not be as silly as I was talking about little pigs or some sort of river in Poland. Yeah. All right. So best of luck. We hope that you don't yeah. encounter any of these problems stay and stay healthy, healthy this Keep winter. Bye-bye so. <laughs> <laughs> right, for now.